So Samsung just announced the brand new Samsung Galaxy Note 20 series of smartphones and we are going to split it into two different videos here. So this video will be talking only about the Galaxy Note 20 series whereby the other video will be talking about everything else. So since we got a short hands-on session with the brand new Galaxy Note 20 series alongside with everything else except the fold, so I'm here to share with you my experience with it. So I'll be holding this phone as my notes and so the first thing that I want to talk about is the two variants of the Galaxy Note 20 series. Right now we have the Galaxy Note 20 and the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. This time around we don't have the plus variant which is in contrast with the Galaxy Note 10 plus from last year but I think the new Ultra is the new plus so we'll just have to roll with that. And the next thing is the recurring theme, bronze. Of course in all of Samsung's teaser, it's always the same thing, bronze color. And well, everything else is also available in bronze color. But besides just bronze, you can choose some other colors as well. So Samsung has introduced a total of three colors each for both the Galaxy Note 20 and the Note 20 Ultra. So for the Note 20, it's all in matte finish. You got Mystic Bronze, Mystic Green, and also Mystic Gray. For the Note 20 Ultra, you have Mystic Bronze, which is in matte finish, but there's also Mystic Black and White, which are both in glossy finish. So I think I do have a bureau showing the two differences between the matte and the glossy finish, but I will show you if I have it. And the Mystic Bronze color here is very different compared to the Galaxy Note 9's copper color. So it does have some resemblance, but for me personally, I do think that the bronze is a bit brighter compared to the copper color on the Galaxy Note 9 and I'm not sure if it's due to the lighting of that venue that we are in it kind of feels a bit pinkish when I look at the bronze color on the Galaxy Note 20 and what surprised me the most is the Galaxy Note 20's mystic green color uh, it instantly reminds me of the Galaxy Note 10 series prism green which I have been using here for like more than a year this is one of my favorite colors, personal favorite colors, because when I look at it, it's kind of like love at first sight, I would say. And I'm really surprised that Samsung is bringing back this specific color for the Galaxy Note 20 series. But I do hope that they are bringing the same mystic green color to the Note 20 Ultra too. And now let's quickly jump into the official cases for the Galaxy Note 20 series. So we have the usual slew of cases, the silicon one, LED case, flip case, leather case, window case, and two more that stood out to me is the ones with a transparent back. So one of it is a transparent case with a border, very similar to this case that I'm using for the S10 Plus, by the way. And then another one with a transparent back and also a kickstand at the back bottom here. So I think there's only two reasons why Samsung made this official case. Number one, to protect it from scratches, obviously. And the second reason is to show off the brand new colors of the Galaxy Note 20 series. And yeah, I do think that's a good move because I purposely got this transparent case just to show off this specific color. There's also the Kvadra case. I think that's how it's pronounced. Um, those cases are unique because it's made out of PET material, recycled polyester and they are repurposed from plastic bottles so you are technically helping the environment if you are using the Kvadrat case. So now back to the Note 20 series. What's improved here is firstly the S Pen because the S Pen got quite a lot of iterative upgrades across the board. So firstly the latency is now down to I think about 10 milliseconds only and that means it gets you a bit more responsive feeling when you're trying to write or draw on the screen and then the second thing that has been improved is the air actions so air actions if you remember it was first introduced in the note 9 or note 10 remember the magic one feature what you can do now is to go back and open the multitask menu by just drawing that little arrow here so i think if you're drawing this direction it's going back going this direction is going to the multitask menu and as for gaming well the leaks are kind of correct, so you do get Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, I'm not sure for how long, but this is Samsung's partnership with Microsoft that's getting even more stronger, I guess. Um, 
I'm not sure if it's available in Malaysia, but you do have about more than 100 titles of games to stream directly to your Galaxy Note 20 smartphone. There's also a brand new AI game booster which provides you the appropriate amount of resources for your game so you won't get any lag. And I'm not sure if this is available on both the Note 20 or only on the Note 20 Ultra, but there's also 240Hz sampling rate now. And to provide even better cooling, Samsung shows us that there's also a vapor chamber inside the Note 20. And one particular point that stood out to me is something called Bluetooth audio response. I unfortunately didn't have enough time to get more information on this, but I do think that it just means improved audio latency while you are playing games with your Bluetooth earphones. Uh, this is something that we have to try out for ourselves when we get our hands on the Galaxy Note 20, but if you want to learn more about audio latency, check it out at the top right corner there. And the Galaxy Note 20 series also comes with better productivity tools. So right now, the Galaxy Note series is having a lot of features that stood out from the sea of other smartphones in the market right now. So to embrace the new normal of working from home, Samsung is now improving the DeX even further. And if you have a big screen TV at home that supports mirror casting, you can just cast your phone screen into your TV and then Samsung DeX will appear on the TV instead. So what this means is that your phone can still work like a phone with all the phone menu and whatnot, but the TV will be working on DeX so you can kind of like use two separate screens at the same time and both of them are doing different things. This is also a very nice feature to have. And this feature also works in tandem with the Galaxy Watch 3. So what the Galaxy Watch 3 now can do is to control your camera, control your PowerPoint slides, and also control your music directly from the watch itself. So what we did here is to pair with the Galaxy Note 20 via the PowerPoint slides mode. And what I found out is that the watch essentially just becomes a trackpad. So as you can see here, you do get that mouse cursor on the screen while I'm just trying to move around on the watch. So this might open quite a lot of possibilities when it comes to versatility of how you use the entire Samsung ecosystem of products. And on another note, the Samsung Notes app got a pretty big update too. So from what I was told and shown, you can now sync between PC, tablets, and your phone. So this is done presumably through the Microsoft OneNote and also Outlook, which I can't confirm, but well, there's something that syncs in between all of these devices. And one of the coolest feature with the Samsung Notes app, which I really wish that I have during my university days, is the ability to record audio while you're scribbling on the screen itself. So this also goes a step beyond. So there's also something called audio bookmark, I think. So what this does is when you rewind back the audio track that you have recorded, it will jump back to what you are currently drawing on the screen itself to give you a bit more context on what you were doing while that audio is being recorded. This feature is excellent, particularly for a situation like mine where I was in engineering class and I really do wish that there's something to tell me what I was drawing while the lecturer was talking on that particular subject. So yeah, that's neat to have. And another new feature on the Samsung Notes app is called Auto Straighten. So if you are drawing or writing in a crooked manner, uh, you can now hit the brand new Auto Straighten button and it will straighten by itself. This is something that I think it improves in the quality of life and also the user experience because I find myself always just tilting my phone and then start drawing on it because it just gives me a bit more space and you know more area for my hand to rest on. And there's also another new way to connect which is called UWB or ultra wideband. I'm not too sure if this is considered IoT or not because it's still relatively new to me and I didn't have much time to study about it in depth. But generally, I would consider this UWB feature to be some sort of like a, how do you say this? Long range NFC. So Samsung is currently highlighting the UWB in a few different ways, simple ways. So firstly is for discovery. So UWB works as a, line of sight kind of laser technology thing that passes through a lot of objects 
but cannot pass through walls. So what you can do here is point your phone at maybe another phone and then it will discover the other phone through UWB and then you can just hit a button and send your files directly to the other device. And another application for UWB is digital lock. So let's just say you got a digital lock for your home garage or home door and everything else in general. So what you do is just point your phone with the UWB feature uh, onto your doors and then they will unlock by itself. So digital key, very useful. And one more thing that I find it to be kind of interesting is that you can buy UWB tags, just stick them onto something that gets lost very easily or maybe something that's precious to you, maybe um, your camera, your backpack or maybe TV remote because it always gets lost. You can also use UWB to find those objects with that UWB tag. That's interesting because Samsung also has something called Smart Things Find, I think, which you can find your objects with UWB using AR. And now for the camera upgrades. So the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra uses a 108 megapixel main camera and it now has laser autofocus. Yes, Samsung heard all of your complaints and they have now added laser autofocus which is the fastest one available and it also got a pretty big upgrade for the pro video mode so now the pro video mode you can adjust the zoom speed and presumably you can create some smooth zoom transitions which i really like and then one brand new feature that i really like is the ability to switch between which microphone that you want to record with so from the quick glance i did see that there are a total of five different microphone modes to choose from number one is default which just means all the microphones are recording and then you can select only for the front microphone to record which means it's perfect for selfies and then the third one is for the back microphones only so if you want to record somebody else with that rear facing camera you can do so and then you can select your input microphone to be using the usb microphone which is handy so if you have a love mic like the one that i'm wearing here you can just connect it via usb and you can select the audio source and the last one which is the best one out there is to record using a bluetooth microphone so you do know now we have a lot of true wireless earbuds right convert them into a microphone instead excellent and before we end this part uh, i do want to go through some specs of the galaxy note 20 and the note 20 ultra unfortunately i don't have the proper specifics of each phone here but i'll just tell you what i know so the galaxy note 20 will have a 6.7 inch screen with a 60 hertz refresh rate i'll leave the conversation for another time and it also comes with a 4300 milliamp hour battery and for us Malaysians, it is available in 8 gigs of RAM plus 256 gigs of storage and it is available in both 4G and 5G variants. As for the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, it is 6.9 inch in size. It uses Dynamic AMOLED 2X display. It can go up to 120Hz refresh rate. It also can go up to 20% brighter than before. 4,500 million power battery and for us Malaysians it comes with 12 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage and that's all we know about the Galaxy Note 20 and the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra as of now unfortunately like I said we don't have much time with the experiential session so we can't answer all of your questions but here are what we know and we are actually recording this video on the same day just a few hours before the whole unpacked event so if you got this far into the video remember to give us a like do subscribe and we'll see you in the part two of this unpacked event coverage